Hurricanes, water, the deadliest element on earth. Tara Ann Wright, North Carolina Central University, the Department of Earth Science. In this presentation, we're going to look at um, the Saffron Simpson hurricane scale hurricanes in general, what they are, what they do. And there's four specific hurricanes that we want to look at. Hurricane Bertha, Hurricane Fran, Hurricane Bonnie, Hurricane Floyd. Give you a little bit about the conclusion and then the future research and also the references. The Schaefer Simpson hurricane scale is a scale for hurricane wind speeds and it comes in categories based on the hurricane itself. One and two are less intense, yet they are still can cause damage. Three, four, and five are what we like to go ahead and have evacuation plans. It causes significant um, property damages and lives can be lost due to these types of hurricanes. Um, with the scale, it allows um, communities to put a dollar amount on the property damage and also allows for evacuation plans to be put in place for the areas that are going to be affected. But before we begin, we have to look at what hurricanes are. And they are swirling storms that produce winds of 119 kilometers per hour, or if you want to convert that, is 74 miles per hour or higher. These hurricanes form over warm ocean waters and sometimes they strike land. When a hurricane reaches land, it pushes a wall of ocean water ashore. This wall of water is called a storm surge. Heavy rain and storm surge from a hurricane can cause flooding in these coastal communities and depending on the category's strength, it can go further inland. So when I first began the project, I wanted to look at raster analysis with land cover change with these um, specific hurricanes. But as I started to go into different um, websites and do further research, I noticed one thing. All of them had the same swirl patterns and the eyes struck almost similar spots on the coast of North Carolina, which made me change my whole research question. What is the correlation between the swirl patterns and the travel paths off the coast of North Carolina? And as I go further in and show you pictures and slides, what we're going to do is look at these patterns and see if there's any type of correlation between the two. So first we have Hurricane Bertha, which was July 12, 1996. And what was very important about it, it was a rare hurricane because it came in the month of July. It was also the first hurricane to make landfall in North Carolina in over 90 years. It was a category three hurricane. In category three, the winds typically begin at 111 and top out at 129 miles per hour. The affected areas were Onslow County and New Hanover County. And here we just wanna look at the swirl patterns of how it comes in and swirls around and comes right up the coastline right here with the eye of the hurricane and as i go through this presentation and show you other ones we're going to look at the same um, patterns and see the correlation between the two hurricane fran as you can see we're going to go ahead and look how it spun out and came in and this is an infrared image from noaa and from the GO satellite. And what we're going to do is look right here, same entry point as Hurricane Bertha. And Hurricane Fran was also a Category 3 hurricane. Um, this hurricane is what propelled me to further my studies. Um, this is a hurricane that I will never forget because this hurricane impacted my life in a dramatic way. Um, on September the 5th, 1996, um, I just laid my sons down to sleep and my youngest brother was coming in 
And as he was walking through the living room, trees began to crash and break through our home. We were blessed enough to escape the home and seek shelter at a local hotel because our whole neighborhood was flooded because we sat, our neighborhood was a river community. Um, and it made me think like if prediction models could tell you where the hurricane could strike, why can we look further and see how far these wind gusts and these um, storm surges could come inland to better evacuate the people who are not coastal community members. So um, the affected areas here were Topsail Island, Curve Beach, Jacksonville, New Hanover County. But this particular hurricane right here, as you can see, goes all the way up and extends to Raleigh and the Triangle area. So this was a, a hurricane that was actually felt almost inclusive of the whole state of North Carolina. Hurricane Bonnie, once again, is another um, Category 3 hurricane. Um, its significance is it had um, very high storm surge um, between 5 to 8 feet. The same cities are affected. If you look at the swirl pattern as how it comes in and goes right in there, you see South Carolina, Georgia, all that. So we want to look at how it comes right into these coastal areas. And the swirl patterns, once again, are the same as in Bertha and Fram. Um, what is noticeable about, noticeable about this hurricane is um, a lot of the sediment disturbed the land. We're looking at 50 centimeters, which is equivalent to about 20 inches thick of the sediments that were produced beyond the beach itself. So this is relating to a lot of land cover change over time due to this particular hurricane here. We want to look at Hurricane Floyd next. And what we want to look at here this one was category four, which changes greatly because we're looking at increased wind speeds of 130 miles per hour, all the way up to 156 miles per hour. This particular hurricane is often categorized with um, Hurricane Andrew, and its significance is it had storm surges almost 10 feet tall. It had extensive flooding. And once again, what we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to look right here. And as it swirls, even though it's a higher concentration of the hurricane going in from the coastal communities, moving up inward, as you can see, the magnitude spreads out to Virginia, Delaware, Maryland, and all across these coastal um, cities along here. But the intensity went a little further in. So some of the uh, states over here who normally wouldn't actually get any of the hurricane effects, they were actually affected by this. But what we want to concentrate on, or what I want to concentrate on, is the swirl patterns and how the entry point of an eye of a hurricane has a specific effect on how it swirls out and go ahead and dissipate over time. One thing we notice about hurricanes, they come in and they take time to formulate. Hurricanes do not just start on a specific day and end the same day. They take time to become tropical storms and then they form as they gain speed with their wind velocities. And over time, it could be up to a week span before it actually comes from from the ocean and pushes upwards towards um, the North American hemisphere. Normally they start in the Caribbeans and then they either die out or don't become actual hurricanes because of the speeds needed um, to be categorized. So once they hit landfall, which is around Florida, and they get close in that vicinity, that's where the watch kind of comes into play because Florida would be the first, followed by South Carolina, uh, North Carolina, 
Virginia and all up the eastern uh, seaboard here. So, what we're going to look at right now is a comparison of hurricanes. And you look side by side, there's two distinctive things that we want to notice. Each one comes in on an entry point. Now, if you notice, right here, right here, they all come in between Onslow, New Hanover County, and depending on the magnitude, they spread upward and cities more inland are affected or the magnitude here you have it it's still coming in in the same areas but we have a greater magnitude to the states northern from us but what i was fascinated about is all of them tend to have the same wind um the same swirl pattern so you see as it comes in we have a swirl and an entry point you see as it comes in, we have a swirl and an entry point. Same for Floyd and the same for Fran. But why is the entry point the same for each hurricane? Whether we're talking about Bonnie, I mean uh, Bertha and Fran, which were in the same exact year, one in July, one in September, Bonnie, which was two years later, and then followed by Hurricane Floyd, which was a year after Bonnie. So, is the entry point in the swirl patterns of the either hurricane when it hits landfall significant? Does it change? Even though I'm looking at only four, if I go back, would there be a possibility to show a correlation in this and with this correlation what what types of information can we look at what can we find out so in conclusion we know they share the same swirl patterns we know they share a common entry point coming into the state of North Carolina and how does that affect what research what possible questions could we find out from this so with the further research, what I would like to look at is study hurricanes over a 10-year period. I want to go back and look at these four in comparison to prior hurricanes and see if the entry point and the swirl patterns are the same. And what is the correlation? Is there a reason behind this? Is there an ex explanation on why every time there's a hurricane and it makes landfall, it comes in this way? I see it as a way to do preparation for the communities because if there is a correlation, we can look at it for building structures. Because if there is one correlation between them, we can figure out building codes that can withstand certain category um, hurricane strengths looking at three, four, and five. We can make communities more aware. We can also look at the environmental aspects such as the erosion properties on the beachfront and coastal communities. Um, also put funding aside for evacuation preparations and um, temporary housing. So I, I found with this research that it seems to be very um, articulate, whether there's a correlation or not, but we can look into these patterns and see with this entry point and further gain better understanding of hurricanes itself. I hope that my presentation fascinated you. I hope it gave you a better insight into um, understanding hurricanes, looking how North Carolina is always greatly affected. Um, as we want to go back and look, we had two in one year, less than an, uh, a month and a half apart, and then every two years and every year after that. Um, a lot of times we don't really hear about it inland because we're not really affected unless the category of the hurricane is a three, uh, a four, or a five. Um, we also uh, want to look at um, focusing on those coastal communities to getting better understanding and preparation awareness for hurricanes for the upcoming season. Um, hurricane season, um, 
I did mention is from for the Atlantic June 1st to November 30th and for the Eastern Pacific it's May 15th through November 30th which means we just got out of hurricane season um, and I think during the hurricane it's great to do awareness and preparation but also after the hurricane season it's a good time to look at what we can learn from the hurricanes um, different model building that we can kind of estimate where the next ones are going to come and how many we're possible possibly going to have for the season coming thank you